sometimes loopholes are handy. Hey, you mean I can use this coupon again? Like tomorrow or later today? <laughs> sometimes loopholes are downright great. Hey, you mean I get to keep all of these airline miles I earned from this work travel? All right. <laughs> and sometimes they're absolutely terrible. And security loopholes? Yeah, they fall into that last category. If you're looking to add connectivity to your next design, like a lot of us are doing these days, you definitely want to keep those last loopholes in check. You don't want to be known as the next fish tank thermometer dude, do you? Yeah, I didn't think so. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today we're talking about building a secure foundation for your next IoT design with both hardware and software in mind. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Adnan Rangarajan from Microchip and I are digging into the details of the Sam L11 KPH MCU from Microchip. We take a closer look at the secure foundation details of this microcontroller and also check out how the Sam L11 KPH helps embedded designers develop their applications without worrying about security. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about the Sam L11 KPH microcontroller from Microchip. Hi, Anand. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Amelia. Okay, so on a previous Chalk Talk, we talked about the Sam L10 and Sam L11 family of devices that were released into production in June of 2018. But you guys also released a new variant called the Sam L11 KPH recently. So tell me more about this variant and the family as a whole. Sure, we're very excited about the SAM L11 KPH, but let me first start with a brief overview of the entire family before getting into the KPH device. The SAM L10 L11 is our award-winning family of products that incorporates a Cortex M23 core that runs at 32 megahertz and offers up to 64 KB flash and 16 KB SRAM. The family comes in three variant options, L10, L11, and the new L11 KPH. All the three variants have the same peripheral options with op amps, a 12-bit ADC, a 10-bit DAC, and the serial interfaces. The SAM L10 family is our general purpose microcontroller with ultra low power capabilities and excellent touch with our peripheral touch controller, the PTC. SAM L11 adds on to the SAM L10 with enhanced integrated security that includes secure boot, trust zone, and our crypto accelerator. The third variant, the SAM L11 KPH, adds on to the SAM L11 by adding a unique secure key or identity that is provisioned at the microchip secure facility. It also integrates Trustonic's KinEBM a security software that makes secure application development simple and fast. So Anand, what kind of applications are we really looking at here? The SAM L11 family are targeted for a broad range of applications from IoT and security all the way to ultra low power and capacitive touch applications. Now that's a really broad spectrum of cutting edge applications for one family of devices. So Anand, let's get into the security story here. What does that look like? Yes, that's where the SAM L11 KPH comes into the picture. Let's look at a typical IoT node. I'm using a connected temperature sensor as an example. To make this connected temperature sensor a robust, secure node, we have to have three key steps. The device, needs to have a unique secure identity. It should also have a secure boot feature that starts up the microcontroller or the application in a known good state all the time. That's the root of trust. It should also have the ability to protect the application or the IP from remote attacks, including malwares. These three steps will provide a strong security foundation. The fourth step is to write the user code or the application itself that will read temperature and transmit to the cloud. Embedded programmers are familiar with the step four, but most of them get overwhelmed with the steps one, two, three, and this creates the huge barrier. Security foundation is where they need help to accelerate 
development and most importantly to avoid any security loopholes which is provided by the Kini BM with a SAM L11 KPH solution. Okay, so Anand, how exactly do you address that huge barrier? With the SAM L11 KPH, of course. The SAM L11 KPH, as I said earlier, ships with a strong security foundation of unique identity and Kini BM. Kini BM not only provides a trusted execution environment, but it also abstracts away the intricate security details of SAM L11 and provides a black box approach with easy to use APIs to implement all the security features, including secure boot and IP protection. So the SAM L11 KPH is like a secure sandbox for application development and lets embedded programmers develop their applications like they do on any general purpose MCU without compromising on security implementation because Kini BM with SAM 11 KPH will take care of that security implementation for them. Now, I can see how that could really help lower the barrier while tightening security. So, Anand, can you give me some more details about the Kini BM? Definitely. Kini BM is developed by Trustonic a leading provider of security solutions for smartphones and mobile devices. Trustonic has been securing over 1.7 billion devices and 9 out of the top 10 Android suppliers embed Trustonic security solutions today. Wow, so they really know what they're doing. Most definitely. Trustonic has leveraged their security expertise in the mobile space and have brought it to the microcontroller or the embedded space. They've fully integrated Kini BM with the SAM L11 KPH's security features and now provide a solution that aims at simplifying secure application development. Developers can use Kini BM and implement the security features like secure boot, secure firmware upgrade, IP protection, multi-cloud enrollment, and anti-clowning solutions. The goal is to avoid security holes while simplifying and accelerating the development process. Okay, so I'm curious about that multi-cloud enrollment. Can you tell me more about that? Sure. Traditionally, an IoT node once deployed is hard-coded to connect to one specific cloud provider. And if you want to change your cloud provider for some reason, you have to reprogram or in fact even use a different hardware. With the SAM L11 KPH and Kini BM, your IoT node can connect to a cloud of your choice. You can use the identity of the SAM L11 KPH and the Kini BM solution for that. So if you're a developer, you just have to create one set of hardware and then you can use that hardware to connect to the cloud of your choice, saving you cost and development time. Excellent. Now, Anand, how exactly do I get started with the SAM L11 KPH and Kini BM? It's very simple. Get a SAM L11 Explained Pro Evaluation Kit. Download the IoT Developer Kit for free from the link shown above and start developing your solutions. We have an excellent set of collaterals and getting to started guides that you can download from that site. And it also provides answers for some FAQs and additional resources to get you started easily. Excellent. Well, Anand, can you recap your main points for me? Sure. The award-winning SAM L10 L11 family brings exceptional benefits to security, low power, and touch applications. The SAM L11 KPH incorporates a strong security foundation and helps avoid security holes. It enables embedded programmers to develop their application like they do on any general purpose MCU without compromising on security because SAM L11 KPH and KiniBM will handle security for your applications. SAM L11 KPH is designed from ground up to simplify and accelerate secure application development. Excellent. Well, this was super cool, and I think I have run out of time. So thank you so much for joining me, Anand. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, Amelia, for the opportunity. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about the SAM L11 KPH MCU from Microchip. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.